the great name behind the way my tail <laughs> Welcome to Knife Reviews. My name is Joshua Hightower and this is my partner, Eddie. The knife that we're going to be doing today is the Heli Tomogamy. I like this knife enough that I had a custom sheath built for it to be put on my canteen carrier made by Deep Woods Handcrafted uh, Leather. It just uh, snaps on. And then it's a dangler on your belt if you want it to. Okay, so the Heli Tomogamy was designed in collaboration with Les Stroud. A lot of you guys know him as Survivor Man. The knife itself is made from, or the handle is made from a curly birch. Very pretty. It is a triple laminated carbon steel. It keeps a very good edge. And it's got some pretty decent stain uh, resistance. The blade itself is four inches long, cutting length. The handle is four and a quarter inches long. The overall length is about eight and a quarter inches long. It's held in place by these two steel or copper pins. Now, this knife is what's called a uh, full three quarter tang. Basically, that means that it's goes the length of the handle and just a little bit smaller tang than the actual blade profile itself. As with all of our bushcraft knives we have uh, six categories that we go over. There's going to be chopping and batoning and then cutting and feather sticking, spine scraping, barrel rod usage and then at the end we'll have my fit and finish category that I also include how I think it feels you know how does it uh, compensate on hot spots things of that nature chopping It chops through there pretty well. The one thing I will say about it is that uh, it's incredibly light. You will not believe how light this knife is until you've actually used it. And um, because of that, it doesn't have as much uh, weight behind it when you're swinging the chop. And uh, so it kind of falls behind on the chopping just a little bit. So we just baton through this knot in there and you can see right there that's a big thick knot we went right through it no nicks or dings in it um, really just goes through it like a champ so that's something that we're very impressed with so for chopping and batoning um, one of the characteristics of Scandinavian knives, obviously, is that really nice Scandinavian grind. It, uh, it harkens back to kind of that Mora um, heli style knives. It's just a really beautiful grind that it, uh, it's just designed to do these tasks so well. The only bugaboo that I could ever say about it on the chopping batoning is that it just needs if it had just a little bit more weight um, it might chop better but having said that you know you've got any number of tools that you can use for chopping 
So this is more of a companion knife. This is the knife that you do for all of your tests when you have other tools out there. If you were strictly going survival, this might not be the number one knife you take, but for bushcrafting, this is perfect for it. So for chopping, batoning, we take a little bit down because of the weight issue. We give it a nine out of 10 on chopping and batoning. A nine out of 10. And next category for our tomogamy will be cutting. cutting. And um, as I'm sure many of you know, one of my favorite ways to figure out how nimble and agile a knife is, is how quickly you can carve out a decent um, bow drill kit and more specifically how well the spindle comes out because the spindle re requires several smaller different styles of cuts and it kind of encompasses many many different cuts throughout the bushcraft world we'll get right to it Okay, so what I'm finding on this knife is that um, it glides through the wood. And what I mean by that, if you take your knives out and you're <clears throat> just practicing, making a bow drill kit, you will find something called drag. And what that means is how well the knife separates the cut. So it glides through it or it has drag on it and it slows down. So how quick are you able to slide that knife through a piece of wood? A piece of wood. It has a lot to do with um, sharpness and keeping it maintained. You know, the harder you have to push on it, the more dangerous it gets. Um, I don't remember the last time I've sharpened this. I've put a leather strop on it um, probably about a week ago but it maintains an edge incredibly well and it quite literally is gliding through the wood with no effort. It, uh, it's actually at a point where you have to pay attention to how sharp it is because it could be dangerous if you're not being careful. Another test that I always like to do for cutting is the duct tape or gorilla tape cut. What this simply is, is about 40, and I stepped it up on this one to 40 layers of Gorilla Tape wrapped around and wrapped around. So um, it's very, very tough and a lot of knives that aren't polished well or stropped or have any burrs on it, they'll catch up on this stuff and it just makes it really difficult to cut through. We'll see how this does. And so what I want to show you is, and you might not be able to tell in here, but this is smooth, very, very smooth. A lot of times when I cut the Gorilla Tape, I'll have knives that go right through it, but this will be rough and it's obvious that it's got a lot of drag on it. This is slicing through it incredibly well. So for cutting, we're going to give this a 10. ten out of, what are we going to give it? A 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10? 10 out of 10. 
We're going to give it a 10 out of 10 on cutting. As you can tell, without getting into too great a detail, it's feather sticking, no problem. You're not going to have any issues feather sticking with this. You're able to create some really, really fine stuff. Uh, if you can see it, um, some stuff is so fine that I can't even keep it on the, the stick or the branch that I'm cutting on. Very, very good stuff. I can't find any reason to bump this down from 10, so we're giving it a 10 out of 10 on feather sticking. You know, so if you pick the right wood, you're going to get all you need. Hit that with the spark and you're going to have a fire going. So for spine scraping, we'll give this an 8 out of 10. So now we come to the part where we do the ferrule rod. I can tell you, I already know what it's going to do. Um, but I still need to show you. If there is anything that I could say, you know, I would like to be different, it's, a, it's basically how it would do a ferro rod. But, you know, if you're taking um, a nice big chopper or an axe, or you can find a nice sharp rock, you won't have to use the back of your spine for striking a ferro rod. But as you can see, there's almost no spark off of this. And that's it being a triple laminated steel. Watch back, stand back a little bit. So on the last category, fit and finish. This knife, it fits in your hand perfectly. I have average size hand, but I got fat fingers. And this thing fits perfectly. I have not gotten a single hot spot. It's got great gripping on choking back and choking forward. You can do menial tests, big tests. Um, it cuts well. It's got a great Scandinavian style blade on it. It's got a great grind on it. Um, beautiful handle material. And um, it's just about as tough as it can be. I really can't find anything I dislike about it. Um, unless you consider it being maybe just a little bit too light. Something you dislike. It's got a nice lanyard hole here. If you want to uh, have some like shot cord or something to wrap around your hand it's just a really good overall knife so strictly for the sense of bushcrafting on fit and finish it's got a great polish it's got I mean just smooth blade you can tell a lot of good work went into this this is made by a master craftsman um, at the heli factories this is not just some stamped out um, quickly jig ground knife and then thrown into a bin. This was a lot of care went into this knife and the design is spot on for bushcrafting. So for fit and finish, 
I'm gonna give this a nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. Even though this is one of my favorite production knives, I didn't give it a perfect score, obviously. It's not our highest scoring knife, but it is a very, very high scoring knife. For the price range that it's in, I don't know that there's a better production model in that uh, 150 range. It'd be very, very tough to beat this in that $150 range. So if you're out there and you're looking for a knife, um, if for beginner knife or to teach with, or you like that Scandinavian Mora style um, with a little bit better quality, this Halley Tamagami is going to be the knife that you're gonna to wanna to look at to at least start with. It's a beautiful knife. It's got great finish. This is just, this is years of hard use on it. Um, yours will come out shiny out of the box. They do have some with jimping on it. It just depends on what run you got. Um, I'm not a big fan of the jimping. I'm, I got the, the older ones right before the jimping and then they, they got rid of it after a while. This is a knife you'll like. I absolutely would tell you if you like this style of knife and you want to spend, you know, 150 bucks, on a good quality knife, absolutely go with it. You're not gonna be able to use it to strike a, um, a ferro rod fire, but you could use the blade edge if you wanted to. If you're in an emergency, you could scrape it to get the spark there or find a sharp rock or find something to, to uh, scrape the ferro rod. But we wanna be a little bit different in that we're just talking about getting it out of the box and how it's going to perform for you. How the money that you spend, is it going to be worth it? Because you can't feel a knife before you order it online. And unless you're, uh, you know, going to knife shows or gun shows and able to uh, grab them and feel them, all you're gonna be doing is sometimes having a celebrity uh, tell you, oh, I designed this knife, it's a beautiful knife. You, it's the best knife in the world. Uh, you know, it might be. But how do you know? And then you drop $200 on it and then you find out that it's not anything like you thought it was gonna be. We're just trying to show you what the knife can do. So for me and for Evan, we really, really do appreciate you being here. If you have any questions, any comments, any concerns, email us at knives at knifereviews.us, uh, Facebook and YouTube. Knife Reviews, our Facebook group and our Facebook page is Knife Reviews. We have lots of cool discussions about, uh, um, you know, frontiersman history and knives and guns and everything on the uh, Knife Reviews group page. So, uh, once again, really do appreciate you. If you have a chance, if you could like, subscribe, share our videos, watch the other videos that we have up, we'd really appreciate that. Have a wonderful day. Be safe out there and God bless. God bless. Bye bye. Bye bye.